Welcome to First Presbyterian Church, Joliet, and our online worship. I'm Pastor Roy Backus, and uh, you'll hear from Bo, Pastor Bo, as he brings his, the sermon later in, in the service. And we'll also hear from Lindsay as she uh, works with the children's sermon. And we want to welcome you and pray that the Lord will bless you during this uh, time. We have a few announcements. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, as part of our listening uh, congregation and uh, I want to let you know that uh, last Wednesday we had a great Thanksgiving feast for our Wednesday night group uh, and uh, but we will not be meeting again this Wednesday coming because it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving so remember that our Thanksgiving uh, ecumenical worship service will be held at the Joliet Jewish congregation and that will be at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening uh, if you wish to go uh, and I hope you do. I hope we, we will celebrate with and support our, our brethren in the uh, Jewish congregation. Uh, please either click on the link that we have on our website or click on or fill in the blank <laughs> with the material that you got on our uh, e-news that went out Wednesday. And uh, the other route is if you don't use email, then please call the church office before uh, Monday afternoon. We also have our blood drive, which is next Sunday. And so please uh, check our website and sign in there. We really appreciate that. Also, we have the Advent decorating, and, uh, which is a great time. You can come to have breakfast uh, on Saturday morning, December the 2nd, here at the church. And then after that, stay and help decorate the sanctuary, which is always so beautiful for the Christmas Advent season. And we invite you to come. Uh, I believe that's all of it, except we do want you to pay attention to your mail because the Advent devotionals are coming out uh, this week. And so it'll be coming into your homes. Uh, Bo and, and myself, and with help from Lindsay also, put together the worship services for uh, Advent, and they'll be corresponding to your readings in the devotions this year. So remember that, and the Lord bless you. Our call to worship. Grace to you and peace from God Almighty. Let us rejoice and give thanks for the sun's energy, even through the clouds. We know that God meets us here because of his covenant with us. We gather in the spirit of Jesus, whose name we bear. We give thanks for the everlasting good news that Christ reigns. Let us celebrate the faithful witness of Jesus the Christ, seeking to share the good news of Christ's presence in our lives. God's Holy Spirit encounters us here. God's Holy Spirit empowers us and inspires us to go into the world, serving in the name of Jesus, our King and our Savior. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the way your Spirit works through a media and through so many other ways. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak to our hearts. I ask you, Lord, to bring new awareness, new commitment, new energy to our lives as we worship together. And may we celebrate your kingship as we serve you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our Lord and our God, now as we hear your word, fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may delight in your presence. Sharpen our minds that we may discern your truth. Shape our wills that we may desire your ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from Romans 8, chapters 18 through 28. Consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be set free from its enslavement to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been growing together as it suffers together the pains of labor. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words, and God, who searches hearts, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And one thing I ask, and this I will see, So give me Jesus and I'll be satisfied The living water, the well that won't run dry And in his presence we find our true life So give me Jesus and I'll be satisfied search for treasures afar and drink deep of every desire but at your right hand are oceans of joy a harbor for drifting hearts so give me Jesus and I'll be satisfied the living water, the well that won't run dry. And in his presence, we find our true life. So give me Jesus, and I'll be satisfied. Give me Jesus. So give me Jesus, and I'll be satisfied. Yes, I will. The living water.
friends. I'm Lindsay, and I'm going to be sharing our Bible story with you today. First, I've got a question for you. Have you ever had a friend or a sibling get a gift, maybe for their birthday or for Christmas, that was something that you really wanted, that made you really jealous? Now they have it, and you don't, and you've got all these feelings. Sometimes it can be really hard to keep those feelings in control. We know that we should be happy for our friend or for our sibling, and that we should be happy for what we have and be thankful, but sometimes it's really hard when we feel jealous. Now, you may be familiar with the story of Joseph, but real quick, Joseph was the favorite child out of all of his brothers, and they knew it, and they really didn't like him because of it. Now Joseph was given an elaborate gift. He was given a robe of many colors that may have looked something like this. Beautiful, right? It was an extravagant, amazing gift. And usually being given a long-sleeved robe like this meant that you were of elevated status or maybe even that you were exempt from doing manual labor. Now his brothers let their envy and their jealousy grow out of control and Joseph didn't really help the situation a whole lot. He would tattle on his brothers for not doing a good job. And he would tell them about these dreams that he had where he rose to power over them and that they had to answer to him. Maybe not the best choice or maybe not super helpful when your siblings already don't like you for being the favorite. Now, because of this, because they let their feelings grow out of control, they came up with this elaborate evil scheme to get rid of him. Now, they took Joseph and they threw him in this pit and they came back to their father and told him that he had gotten eaten by an animal, that they, they had taken his multicolored robe and they ripped it up and said that he was killed by some animal. But really what happened after they threw him in this pit was that they sold him into slavery. Obviously not the best way to deal with these emotions. Now, Joseph could have been kinder towards his brothers, or he could have made the choice to not rub, it, rub in the fact that he was the favorite, but his brothers could have talked to Joseph about the way that he was making them feel instead of going out of their way to cause him harm. Romans 12:8 tells us, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now this means that when it comes to our words and our actions, the things that we have control over, we need to make the choice to follow Jesus. Does Jesus want us to treat others kindly? Does he want us to speak kindly to other people? Does he want us to show others that he loves them? Yes, to all of the above. So we need to make the choice that will help us live at peace with others. Let's pray. God, thank you for this reminder to each of us today. And God, help us to make the choices that show others who you are and your love for them. Help us to keep our feelings under control and that we would take the time to pray and reflect on the choice that would make your goodness known. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday, kids.
God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way By the roadway in the wilderness He'll lead me And rivers in the desert I will see Heaven and earth will fade But his word will still remain He will do something new today God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way He leadeth me Oh, blessed thought, oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught, whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He Today's sermon is titled Stories from Rock Bottom. And the reason for, for that is as you look at life, as you look through the human experience, there are moments in time where it feels like people experience this rock bottom moments. And what makes it hard at time is for us to understand the meaning of them. What makes it hard is to understand or find the strength that is needed for us to move from one place to, to, the, to, to the next. And when I think about that side of human experience, I think 
of this story in the Old Testament, the story of Joseph and his brothers. Uh, if you are familiar with the story, um, Joseph is one of Jacob's son, Israel, as, as he is named uh, after he battles the angel. And Joseph is mostly known for his colorful striped coat and uh, uh, the envy that he gets from his brother as a result of being loved and beloved and everything else by his father. And his story is somehow puzzling. Why would God use this young man to teach us a lesson? So I would like for us to to, to really dive into the story today and maybe look at it from a, a, with a little different perspective of what it means to go through rock bottom. The story uh, today comes to us from Genesis chapter 37, and it's all about Joseph being sold by his brothers. Now his brothers, the, the word of the Lord said, his brothers went from went to pasture the, their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I'll send you to them. He answered, here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brother and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. So Joseph came to Shechem and uh, a man found him wandering in the fields and the man asked him, what are you seeking? And he says, I'm looking for my brother. Tell me, where are they pasturing the flock? Um, the man said, they have gone away for I heard them say, let us go to Dot uh, Dotan and Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dotan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him in one of the pits. Then he shall say, then we shall say a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, Reuben was one of the, the old, uh, one of the brothers, the oldest one. But when Reuben, Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw me into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hands and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brother, they stripped him of his robe, the ornated robe that he wore, and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. This is the word of the Lord for us today. I had a hard time starting to write for this sermon today. And part of it is because, as I said early on, it's about trying to capture the human experience from a faith perspective. And as it happens, the Lord does work. I found this prayer that says, Lord Jesus, your light shines within us. Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. Lord Jesus, your light shines within us. Let my heart always welcome your love. Amen. Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. Let us start this morning with a statement that I believe to be true for anyone living under the sun. Hard times are part of the human experience. All of us experience these moments of rock bottom, rock bottom and 
it seems at times that this becomes our temporary residence for a while. Have you heard the expression, we all are equal at the foot of the cross? What that means is that when we are confronted with our sin, the love of God meet us all, meets us all in the same way. There is another place where uh, we find the same sense of equality. You guessed it, the rock bottom, the pit. The place where lost hope or the unknown of the days ahead, the lost battle with addiction or faith in yourself, the, the place where the loss of a dear one make that place very real, very, very real. And that is the place where we become equal to equal in our bat battle to survive another day, hanging on to that ray of hope that we might find in a doctor's report or in a supportive friend or a community that comes around, uh, around you and loves you and supports you. It is in that rock bottom that we find ourselves to be equal in many ways looking for the same thing, for a little support to step out of the pit. You see, Joseph did not plan for what was ahead of him. When he went to meet his brothers at his father's request, I am sure the spending the night in a pit was not on the, uh, on the itinerary. When he, shares his, when he shared his dreams with his brothers, uh, those given dreams about the future, he did not plan on them to be envious of him. Um, in his innocence, in his approach to life, he was not ready for what life was going to bring his way. Now, given the fact that he was a bit of a tattletale by going to his father and telling on his brothers, or by showing off his coat a little too much, you could say that he did some things that got him into a place where he had it coming. And yet, you need to wonder, was it deserved? This is where the, his story becomes our story. The rock bottom is not always about big events that get us there, that get us into trouble. Sometimes rock bottom is about little things that build up to the point where we have nowhere else to be. And yet we need to remember that rock bottom does not change who you are. Your circumstances, everything around you is changed. But those experiences should bring out who you really are. And that is, in, in part, what we experience here with Joseph. Let's explore a little some of the unchanging facts about our young friend Joseph. You see, nothing that is said about Joseph or anything that his, bro his brothers do to him changes Jacob's love for his son. His brothers lie about him. His brothers injure him. They sell him into slavery, basically. There's no way around this part. Jacob suffers a huge loss, a deep pain, and he, as he hears your son has been killed. And yet his love for his lost son is always present, always part of him. As you read the story later on and you, you get to the point where Jacob, with all his son, with all his families and all the belonging get to Egypt and they get to see Joseph as the prime minister, as Pharaoh's right hand, it, you can almost feel the love, the joy, the... Oh, 
I cannot even express this. You can almost see Jacob breaking down, seeing his son. At one point, he actually says, I can die now because I, I've seen you. Um, is that... picture that I think is important for us today. No matter what is said, no matter what is done to you, your eternal Father will always love you. His love will always be waiting for you. Nothing will change who you are before the Heavenly Father. Here's another one. Nothing that is said to Joseph, nothing that is done to, 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 to him, will ever take away the blessing, the vision that God has for him. His brothers betray him. They beat him. They sell him. Potiphar's wife lies about him. The rock bottom that he visits again and again breaks him. But all that did not put the fire did not put out the fire that was burning in his heart or change who he was. When you really pause the story and think about Joseph, you see that he is faithful to the dreams God put in his heart and faithful in his actions. His faith is about growing, learning, fighting past each pit that life brings him through. Simply put, there is something in each one of us that we were created for. Something that God will see us get through, even if it takes the hard lesson of rock bottom. And I believe there is one more nothing to explore in this story. And that has to do with Joseph. It has to do with his character, with learning to be humble and be faithful even in the little things. You can make the argument that it, it was almost okay for Joseph to take revenge on his brothers when he sees them coming to him in Egypt for help. Um, you can make an argument that he was in his right to return violence for violence. And yet, all that he returns to them is mercy and love, forgiveness and grace. Nothing is going to change the true Joseph. No amount of hurt, no amount of power that he gains, nothing, nothing changes who he is before God. He stays faithful before God in all the little things or big things along the way. So, how is God working in you today? Why is God working in you today? What is God's purpose in the things that you are going through today? Wouldn't it be nice to have the answer to those questions? To say, a year from now, I can reference this day when I'm talking with so-and-so, and I can share with them my experience. Recently, I was talking with a young man questioning his faith. As I listened to him speak, I realized how deep and powerful his questions were. And the hardest part of the conversation came in the, f in the form of these words. I pray, I try to understand, but I can't find answers. Remember the prayer at the beginning of the sermon? Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. What speaks to you today? What are the voices that you listen? Where is your heart getting fed? Let me share something with you that I find fascinating about technology our days and the bigger divide that seems to grow between generations when, when it comes to, to all this. Sometimes I feel myself caught up in the middle between 
traditional media and new media, um, but I found myself um, utilizing almost all social uh, media platforms, and I find it really interesting that if you pay attention, whatever platform you're using, they are very good at looking at your information and almost like using some crazy witchcraft, your feed, your, your feed will be filled with baby goats because you liked, a year ago you liked a video about baby goats jumping around. These platforms have developed a way to give your heart and mind the perfect amount of do dopamine to keep you long enough on the app as you scroll to your next baby goat vi video. They develop the right amount of stimulus. It is good business. But when it comes to spiritual health, to, strength, to staying strong in the spirit, to finding the joy of salvation, I am afraid that I have not found, found an app for that. Our faith needs stimulation from time to time. Our faith needs something to keep it burning. Our faith needs something to move us from one place to the next. And I'm afraid there is only one good way that I know to do that. It is finding and listening for God. It might come to you as a surprise, but the rock bottom, the pit, might be the perfect place where one can hear the voice of God, the gentle nudge. In that place, our hearts and minds, while searching for answers, might be willing to make changes, promises, and may I dare to say life-changing decisions? Maybe those pits are God's way of drawing your attention, of asking us, to pay attention to him. The New Testament reading today says, likewise, the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we are. But that very Spirit intercedes with groaning too deep, with groanings too deep for words. And God who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of, of those who love God who are called for according to His purpose. Maybe the silence of the pit is the place where God can speak to us. I would like to leave you today with this little parable, and I pray that it will be a great reminder of God's love to you. We all heard Psalm 23 and the words, he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he refreshes my soul. Whenever I hear these verses, in my mind goes so fast to mountains, mountains that surrounded the place where uh, where I grew up and the green lush pastures all around and every time when you walk through you felt like you're walking through the sound of music uh, you know it's all that rich rich green grass made you feel like wow it's I'm part of the picture but also I came to realize that when David write those words the picture of green pasture that he has might be different than mine. Because you see, in the desert, in very dry land, those green pastures might look like patches of grass, might look like enough grass for a day. I remember uh, 
traveling through Oman years back and driving a couple hours before we've seen green. Everything was dry. So I think that sometimes when we look at those words, we need to understand that the Good Shepherd, the Lord, will get us to those places of rest, to the places where we are fed. But first, we have to go through the dry land, through those places of questioning, to those places where we need to learn to hear God's voice. But even then, there is a surprise. Those green pastures, those places of rest, are not there to be forever. There might be enough grass for a day, two, maybe a couple more. And then you have to move. You have to keep going. And I think that is the lesson. That is the lesson of Joseph. He was really, really good at listening to God's voice. Through the challenges, he learned how to be humble. Through the challenges, he learned how to rely on God. Through the challenges, he learned how to follow God to the next step in his life. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. May the Lord help you renew your strength. May you find His voice comforting when you're going through rock bottom. And may you know that the Lord is watching over you. Amen.
As we serve our Lord with our whole lives, this is the time that we offer ourselves with symbols of money because it represents time we have given to the Lord. And the Lord has then given us so many gifts in that time. It's my prayer that you will give to the Lord and to the Lord's church that his kingdom might increase and that his message might go around the world. Let us give. For prayers of the people today, I want to encourage you to take a step back. And before you think of all the things that you want to ask the Lord, I'll encourage you to count your blessings. Name them one by one, as the old hymn says. And then bring your petitions with thanksgiving before the Lord. As we pray, I'm going to offer you a little silent, silence uh, so we, can, we both can do that. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I am thankful to you this day for the way you watch over us, for the daily bread that we receive, for the shelters we have over our heads, for the health in the, in the body, for the friends and families, for faith growing in us, and for faith getting hold of people's hearts. Father, we are thankful, I am thankful for, for seeing your grace around me in ways I cannot comprehend at times. I thank you for being in my life. I thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness that I see around me in your people in the people that you call to be your church. And Lord, in the same thought, I, I, I ask that you will continue to bless your church, to do your work of grace, to do your work of justice, to do your work of mercy. Teach us how to do it again, Lord. It's been a while. We need your help. Lord, I pray that as we fellowship together with friends and family over the week ahead, as we think of Thanksgiving, Lord, I pray that you will put on our hearts those people that need companionship, those people that are left alone, those that are walking without shelter, without food, without friends. I pray, Lord, that you will reach out to them through us, through the things we can do, through the things we can say. Make us your hands and feet. I pray, Lord, for those that need a word of encouragement as they are in a hospital bed or a recovering. I pray that you will use your people, you will use us to encourage them, to speak faith into their lives, because you call us to be people of faith. 
I pray, Lord, for peace this season. As we're thinking of Advent, as we are starting to, to look at the holiday season with everything that's coming up, with so many people celebrating so many different holidays, I pray that you'll remind us all that we are made, created by you, called to love you and to love your people. And I pray, Lord, that love will win. I pray that you will be triumphant, even in the midst of conflict, of pain, of suffering. I don't know how that will happen, Lord, but I believe in you that you can reach down and comfort your people. So in this season, Lord, we put ourselves into your hand and we say, Lord, truly use us for your kingdom. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come. Give us today our daily bread, Lord, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen.